Good day, class. Woo! There we go. Woo! All, all, okay, all three of you people. Anyway. <laughs> Um, all right, so this is going to be the Math 105 um, final review. Okay, so going over all the questions and doing it. So I have mine broken up. If you have the, the hard copy of it, everything's still in, you know, little pieces and whatnot. So I broke this up by question. So each slide is its own question, so I have to work out each one. So, all right, and you'll see me pause it every once in a while because I might have to go use the restroom. But anyway, all right, so this first problem right here, this is just basically a calculator problem. So I'm gonna show you on my calculator. So my calculator, uh, I have an emulator for mine. So you probably don't have the same calculator, but it's basic. So I'm gonna start here. Uh, let me hit, says, okay, so enter right here. So five times 2.9 minus four divided by two. So once you do that, calculator's fine. So it does the order of operation for you. So it's gonna do the multiplication before the division. So we get 12.5. Ah, no, all right, okay. There we go. All right, that's basically it. Let's take a look at this one right here. So again, back to the calculator. So you do it just as is. So it's four squared. And yes, that is all. So that was pretty easy, right? And then there's my parentheses right here. Four, close, open, three, close, plus two, enter. So my answer here is six. There we go. So for these group of questions, if you could use your calculator, you have no reason to get any of this wrong. So seven plus 15 divided by three minus, now on this one right here, the calculator is special. And so I'm gonna show you the trick to actually get to this. Uh, each calculator is different, but they'll do the fraction. So I'm going to go math and number down here at the bottom. It said N over D. You're going to insert one of those. So it's going to put your zero and then you get over seven. So you can enter the fraction as is <laughs> like that. Make sure it matches. The answer is 12. Same thing for something like this. So something like this is gonna be two times. And then my square root 16. So in my calculator, it's blue. So you'll see it right about here. That's in blue, so it's gonna be a control function or in this one, it's a second. So second uh, square root 16. And then I got an arrow out of the radical, kind of like that so, I, so it doesn't keep going. So it's plus parentheses, eight minus square root of 25, then arrow out of that, make sure that the radical closes, just like that. And double check before you hit enter to make sure it actually matches. Then you hit enter right here. The answer for this is going to be 11. So if I was to try to do this by hand, you'd be now this piece right here, so square root of 16 is just gonna be four, right? And square root of 25 is gonna be five. Those are perfect squares. So this is four times two plus eight minus five. So inside the parentheses, eight minus five is three. And then four times two is eight. So and that's gonna give me my, ah, 11. Why did I write? I even wrote the correct answer. I still got it wrong. All right. So, yes, yeah, same thing. So, but calculator is your friend on this. All right. The length of the measurement right here, length of AB from A to B. I, I kind of put the marker in here. So it's from here all the way to here. So 
that looks like it is exactly at there's a little tick mark on top of that that's gonna be four and whatever my units are on this one right here uh, this one didn't have a unit uh, I believe this one is supposed to be in centimeters uh, because if you notice a ruler usually doesn't go out to 15 so it's probably in centimeters so something like that but on your test yours will have a unit if you don't put the units on there you will not get it correct a casting is machined so that 22 one half pounds of metal remains okay that means that's how much is left if the casting weighed 25 and 3 tenths pound how many pounds were removed by the machine so let's take a look if it starts off with this it starts off with this right here and we end up with this we have to see the difference in between these two and mathematically the difference should be subtraction so it should be 25 3 over 10 minus 22 and 1 over 5 so in my other videos that I do of my lessons I, I use a different calculator for this but you know what it's the same type of thing so all the TI calculators have the basic functions so I'm going to show you how to do this one right here so in my calculator so I'm going to go back to the math I'm going to hit the math button okay arrow over to number and up so on this right here I have this piece right here so if you guys can see this so this says U and D that means I have a this piece the U is my whole number plus a fraction so I'm gonna use that so my number is gonna be 25 and then go to the top 3 over 10 and then it's minus and I'm gonna do 22 so I've got to go back to the same thing There's my 22 with 1 over 5, okay, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, there is my fraction as my answer, and this one right here is an improper fraction. You know what? I'm happy with that. It's going to be fine. It is what it is. So there's another way that you could actually do this to try and figure out what is that as a mixed number. So I'm gonna take this number right here, I'm gonna arrow up to do this, hit enter, and then I'm gonna go back to math, and so right here, if you notice on the calculator, for my calculator it says N to D, so that's my regular fraction, and U N D is a mixed number. So I'm gonna leave my, I'm gonna put my answer as a mixed number for this one right here. Okay, so, that means my answer is going to be three and one tenth. So if I went a little bit too fast on this, feel free to back it up and rewatch these parts. All right, find one third of three fifths. Now of this one right here, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, um, I know some people watch this that are not really my students. So percent over 100 equals is over of. So that, and I'm going to treat this as a cross products. So one third of that. So we're going to try and figure out one third of three fifths. So one third of three fifths, uh, one way of doing it is actually doing setting it up like this is my proportions the is and ofs percents okay that's one way of doing it and another way would be just because this type of problem is just one of those ones i'm going to just do one third times three over five so if, if i think of it like this if i were to try to figure out so i'm just going to go on a tangent here and say Hey, if I want to find half of 10, we already know that half of 10 is supposed to be 5, right? So half times 10 is going to give me 5. So one third of this value that I have over here, of this value is what I'm looking for. So 
let's take a look at this. Let's go back and do this piece. So one third of this, so as I multiply this, so one third times three fifths, those will cancel, so I get one over five. Now I'm gonna show you one third times three fifths. Here's my calculator. So one third, so I'm gonna do my math again. So here's my fraction, one over three times three over five. There we go, there's my one fifth. So I'm gonna come back to this one right here because there's different ways of doing this, but when we start off with a percent, we would start it with that. Since this one right here is not a percent, that's why we can go straight to this. So if I do have a percent on this, then I have to go like this. Okay, so here it is right here. Okay, here's uh, another way of doing it. So portion is equal to uh, rate times base. Okay, so, so if I were to do this, it's gonna be 20 over 100 equals, so of 400 is what? That's my X. My is is, I don't know. My of is 400. Because trying to figure out which number goes where is usually the biggest issues. Where the key words together, it's, it's the one that actually gets you. So do you know where rate is supposed to go? What is rate supposed to represent? It, and what is the, the B? What is my base? Base is actually supposed to be my total amount. So do I know that should be my of? So that's one way of actually going through. But I could just do this as a cross products. So I'm gonna change color to show, I multiply this, 100 X equals this way, eight, one, two, three, 8,000, okay? Divide by 100, X is 80. That's an A, sorry. X is 80, so same thing. For every single one of these, you're gonna have something like this. So if you set up your cross products or if you watch any of the videos that I had, um, you'll, have, you'll have the same type of problems all the time. You'll get a bunch of these weirdos and they're always gonna work out very well like this. Eight is 10% of what number? So if I go back and identify my items, so 10%, that's my 10% over 100, which is always over 100, equals is over of. Okay, is, here's my is, eight is of what number? This is my unknown, so I'm gonna put an X right there. Of what number? Because that's a piece I'm looking for. Of is the one, like I said, it's always percent over 100 equals is over of. And I do my cross products. Multiply that way, I get 10x equals, multiply that way, 800 divided by 10, x is 80. Uh, I guess people are not very creative, whoever was making this. All right, let's see. All right, what percent? So now my percent, is the one that's my X. Of 50 is 30. So X percent equal over, I'm sorry, over 100 equals 30 over 50. Because we know my of is 50, my is is 30, and I can put everything where they go, do my cross products, I get 50. X is equal to three, one, two, Three three thousand. When I multiply these right here, and then divide both sides by fifty. Uh, let me see. That's going to come up to be like sixty. Six zero. I think so. 
3,000 divided by 50. Hopefully, yep, 60. X is equal to 60. So I usually like live streaming this because I go too fast if I'm not. So yeah, have questions, email me, I guess. All right, and uh, these are going in order of as your review. So uh, I had page numbers on here. So this is page eleven. So this should be actually question number eleven on my on my t on my review. So if you guys are looking here, this right here tells me the page number up here. So page number is also the question number on your exam. All right, there are 25 women in a class of 35 students. Find the percent of men in the class to the nearest tenth of a percent. So, so there are 25 women in a class of 35 students. This is my whole. So I wanna have a percent of men in the class. So first, I gotta figure out how many men. So if there was 35 total, but 25 are women, I'm gonna do 35 minus 25, which gives me 10 men. So I'm gonna have 10 men, okay? So let's figure that out. So 10 men out of the whole, so percentage of that, so it's 10 out of 35. So 10 out of 35, and I want this as a decimal to the nearest tenth. I'm gonna hit enter right there. So to the nearest tenth, that means I'm looking at this row up here. You guys can see that. All right, I'm looking at this right here to the nearest tenth of a percent. So this is gonna be right here. So it's gonna be 0 0.2857. And this is not a percent yet. So I take this, I take this number right here. So this number right here is my decimal. So here's my fraction, this is my decimal, and then I have to convert to percent. Now the word percent means out of 100. So out of 100. So I would actually take this one right here, take this one right here, which is my 0.2857, and I'll multiply that so times 100. So this number right here times 100. So if that answer is still there, I could just hit times. And so it's going to be right here 28.57. And if I'm rounding to the tenth, the seven is going to make that five go up. So it's going to be 28.6. So, so that's 28.6% of the class are men. How many inches are in two and one third yard? So it, again, if you were watching my previous videos for this, so two and one third yards, Now, I'm gonna do my full unit conversion over one. Now, to be able to do this right, I have to actually convert right here. So yards, so if yards are on top, yards have to be on bottom here. So these are the same lesson I actually had in my videos. So I'm trying to cancel out yards. So I'm gonna turn yards into feet. Okay, and then, so I know that one yard is three feet then I'm gonna do it again because I'm not in inches yet. So I have feet on top and I have to get rid of feet because I want inches. So feet have to go on bottom and then inches go on top. And so when I go through and actually do my work for this right here, I could go through and actually see, oh wait, I gotta fill in my thing. 
so we know that one foot is 12 inches. So I'm going to go through and do some canceling. My yards will cancel out now, and then my feet will cancel out. So at least my last unit right here, which is going to be left, is going to be my inches. So I'm going to have inches left over. So I can go ahead and do the math. So on top, it's going to be 2 and 1 third times 3 times 12. So that's the top of it. And then it's going to be divided by the bottom. So when I divide it by the bottom, it's 1 times 1 times 1. So 1 times 1 times 1. So let's see. So on top, I have my, uh, my mixed number. Two and one over three times three times twelve. So I have eighty four inches on top over one times one times one, which is give me one. So when I do that math right there, I'm just going to divide it by one, which is just eighty four inches in two and one third feet. All right, let's get going. Change three miles per hour to feet per hour. Three miles per hour to feet per hour. So I'm gonna start off three miles, same thing, over one times. And on the bottom, I need to have miles on the bottom and I need to go feet, that's my next unit. This should be on your reference sheet when you're actually doing this. All your unit conversions need to be on the reference sheet. So miles and then there's feet. So one mile is 5,280 feet. So, and it's per hour. So I've taken care of the miles part. Miles is taken care of and per hour. So this is per one, so hour right there. So I'm gonna deal with the hours now. So now hours on bottom, so I don't want hours. So that means when I multiply again over here, hours have to be on top. Hours have to be on top and, so now for right here, it is also converting to hours, so I have that right there. So for this one, I have hours and hours. So on this problem right here, my time is not gonna affect it because I'm going three miles per hour to feet per hour. Because you're gonna see on your test, you're gonna see it, I guarantee you, I already looked at the test. You're gonna see that you're gonna to have to not just have miles per hour, but it's gonna be like feet per minute or feet per second or something like that. So you're gonna to have to do a conversion kinda of like I did here. So on right here, since I have hours and hours, that's my last result, I don't need this piece right here. I don't need that one. I just need to multiply what I have on the top. Or I'm sorry, what I have in black right there. So do the, the math, three times 5,280. And I should get uh, 15840. 15840 feet per hour. So I'm gonna keep going on this. Sorry, I have to take a break. All right, so change 30 gallons per minute to quarts per second. So this is the one that I was telling you about that it is gonna come up. So 30 gallons, one minute. So I'm gonna put gallons on bottom. I always wanna start with the top right here to try and figure out these ones right here. I wanna try and get that out of the way first before I start dealing with the time. So quartz. Now, again, this should be on your reference sheet. I'm gonna pull mine up real quick so you guys could actually see it. All right, sorry, I didn't preload it so you guys could see it. All right, so right here, this is the reference sheet. If you go into Blackboard, I actually already have this on there. So we're going from gallons to quart. So let's see. Um, looking at link capacity, here it is. So I have gallons. 
here it is. So one gallon is this many liters. So this is US metric. Okay, let's see. Uh, US metric. US, US metric. US metric. So it's a basic right here. Liquid, here it is. Liquid volume right here. So one gallon is equal to four quarts. So that should help you out. So one gallon, four quarts. So one gallon is four quart. Now, so uh, I'm going to be done with, so I got this part right here. So I have gallons to quarts, and now I'm going from minutes to seconds. So I'm going to change the colors on these ones because I like color changing stuff. Minutes, seconds. So I'm starting with minutes right here. So I'm going to deal with this. So this next fraction. So I'm starting with minutes and I need to go to seconds. So minutes are down here. They're on the bottom. Now they need to be on the top over here. So it's going to be minutes here and then I can convert to seconds. So sometimes you would have to, like on the previous problem, I, I would have to like do multiple just to actually get there. So kind of like when I went from, uh, oh, what did I do, yards to feet um, to inches. Uh, it just depends on if you have that on your reference sheet already. So we have, so minutes and seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. So now these are set up so I could actually do all the math. So on top, so when I do the top part, I'm gonna to go to the back to the black because that was all there. So 30 times four is going to be 120. And so I'm gonna cancel my gallons. I'm gonna cancel my, oh, no, don't cancel the quarts because quarts are left over. Over. Then from right here, I'm gonna do the bottom, which is gonna be my time. So my minutes are here and that cancels that. So my last thing is gonna be my seconds here. So I'm gonna have seconds left over. So one times one times 60. So one times one times, ah, there we go. Times 60. So it's gonna be 60 seconds and I'm gonna to have to do the math uh, so 120 divided by 60 should give me 2 so if you want to check the calculator you can ah nope turned off all right sorry 120 divided by 60 I get 2 so it's gonna be 2 core every second so make sure you label your units carefully. Uh, you will get docked on that for not actually labeling those. Multiply and express product in scientific notation. Um, do it in the calculator. So on this calculator, this one, all TI calculators actually have a mode button. So you just have to actually check it. So I'm gonna hit mode right here. And right on top, I don't know if you can see my thing. Um, my cursor here so it's on normal you want scientific so I'm gonna arrow over scientific hit enter and then to get out of the screen I hit second and mode again that's quit so that's gonna get me in scientific so I'm gonna just do that I'm gonna put it in the calculator as you see it so four times ten and now we got to find the carrot button so this is my carrot this is how to do my exponents, any exponents. So I used that, the square button earlier, but this one right here is my caret, so I can raise it to other powers. That's gonna be square, over, close, open, two times 10, caret, three, over, close. So if my calculator looks like this, you should be fine. 
and then it's going to spit out my answer in scientific notation. That's why I changed the mode at the beginning. So that's going to be in scientific notation. The E is actually referring to times 10 to that power. So for mine, it's going to be, the answer is going to be 8 times 10 to the fifth power. That's what that notation right there means. So it's 8 times 10 to the fifth. All right, so now we should be up to question 16. Question 16. So again, calculators are your friends, not food. All right, so again, fractions. So I'm gonna start with the math. Set up my fraction. So everything in the top. So 1.44 times 10 to the negative three. So make sure you use the right negative, negative three, otherwise you'll get a syntax error. So I'm gonna put this in parentheses because I don't want my calculator to mess this up. Because some of you guys might actually have like a weird calculator that doesn't read it correctly. So I'm just going to make sure. So if you have it in parentheses, it means that all of that is going to be part of one number. It's got to take care of that first. And then the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing again. 6 times 10 caret negative 5 over and close so make sure it looks all right okay double check it before you hit enter my answer is going to be 2.4 times 10 to the first raise the number in scientific notation to another power Okay, calculator, so two uh, times 10 carat three over, close it. The reason why I keep saying over is because you gotta move over because otherwise you're gonna put a parentheses on the exponent and it's gonna not like that. So now I gotta raise that to a power. So now after you're done with the parentheses right there, you have to hit carat again so that's gonna raise it on the outside. And then there's my two, hit enter. It's four times 10 to the sixth. The following temperatures were recorded. What is the average? Now for average, that means you're gonna add them all up and divide by how many? One, two, three, four. Again, calculator, math, fraction, and I uh, might be, so 199, okay, 199. So it's gonna be 100 plus 99 plus 88 plus 81 and divide that by how many numbers I have. And I have four numbers here, right here. Hit enter. Ooh, wait, change my mode and go back to normal. There we go. So now watch this, I'm gonna go back up again. Click on that and do it again. There we go. So make sure you turn off scientific because I forgot. So my answer is gonna be 92. So the average is 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, with the units, don't just put 92. You have to have degrees Fahrenheit. These hourly pay rates used at fast food restaurant cooks, servers, bussers, dishwashers, uh, managers, find the mode and median. Okay, mode. So, a couple things. Mean is average median is uh, middle and mode is most 
So, let's see. Which number comes up the most? Let's see. Do any of them repeat? So, I only have one, two, three, four, five numbers. So, it looks like 720 comes up there and 720 comes up there. So, the number that comes up the most is going to be 720. So, my mode... There we go, that one's pretty easy. Median. Median is the middle. So I need to put them in order. Uh, which one's 825, uh, 895, and 1025. So there is my five. So, so whenever you're doing it, something like this, I'm going to go through and start canceling out one from each side. Bam, 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 bam. And my middle, okay, my middle number is here. So if I have two numbers right there, I would take those two numbers, add them together and divide by two. I would find the average of the two numbers that are in the middle. Okay, that's very important to understand. So. You, you could be doing an average if I have two numbers that are here. So my median my 825 there we go. Question 20. Earn final grades, listen table for past term, find QPA, quality point average to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so quality points. So every hour you get quality points. So quality points per hour. So that depends on how difficult a class is. So it's kind of like doing like an honors class versus a non-honors class. Okay, so quality, so let's see. So if we're doing this, how many quality points per hour? So it's gonna be this way. So I go this way. Let's see, that's gonna be 12, nine, 12, and then right there, uh, I'm going to get 24, uh, 24, uh, let me see, 4, 3, 1, 33, okay, and so divide that by my however many that I have for that one. So divide that by nine, because I get my nine from these right here. So how many hours total? So divided by nine, so 33 divided by nine. So it's a three point, basically a 3.6 repeating. So my QPA, quality points average. So it's kind of like uh, when you're taking like math class that's worth three credits and that's going to be a lot more harder for the, instead of like that fitness for life class where you basically have to go in there and just work out for 15 minutes a day. So uh, you know what, which one's actually going to be a more worthwhile? Yes, you get quality points out more out of the math class. So that's basically what it's asking for. Change uh, temperature 100 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So it's giving you Celsius, and I want Fahrenheit. So here's a formula to spit out Fahrenheit. So I'm going to say that my F is equal to 9 over 5 times my 100 plus 32. 
So, calculator. So, same thing I keep saying. If you know your calculator, you could do everything here. So, 9 over 5 times 100 plus 32, 212. So, it is going to be 2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, uh, that's how to do the conversion. Two successive recordings, so that means one after another, for a surgery patient temperature were 103.2 and 97.8. Express the temperature change with a sign number. So, if it's going from one to the other, okay, so one to the other, so it's going to be a change. So, it's going to be the figure out to go from here to here. So, going from here to here is going to be 97.8 minus. 103.2 I always going to start off with the second one because that's where I'm actually going to end up at and to see where I'm going going to do so now this is going to help you out too so I know this is going down right so if it is going down I should end up with a negative number out of this so if I don't then you probably mess that up so don't do that 97.8 minus 103.2 negative 5.4 negative 5.4 degrees there is my sign change if it was increasing I would have a plus sign in front of it solve for the following equation so we're gonna actually put all of our X's together so X is already on the left, so count my X's. So together I'm going to have five X's equals my constants, which are my other numbers without variables. A variable has a variable attached to it, and constants don't. So 6 plus 9 is going to give me 15. Divide by 5, X is 3. All right, on this one, it's the same thing, but it's going to have a, another step to it. So now I have a distribution that has to happen first. So bring down my 7x, and I'm going to distribute. So negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And then over here, negative 3 times negative 8. Negative negative is going to make it a positive. The 3 times 8 is 24 equals 28. Now, let's go through and combine like terms. So how many x's do I have on my left? So I'm going to have 4x plus 24 equals 28. And so we'll start by subtracting 24 from both sides. 4x is 4 divided by 4. x is 1. So we have solved it. We have the value for x. So again, right here, uh, I'm trying to solve for m. It, it's one of those problems that it's fine either way that there's fractions. A lot of people freak out by it. But guess what? You have a calculator. Deal with it. So we're trying to solve for m. So to get m by itself, I would subtract 1 fourth from both sides. So m is equal to now, so it's doing one-third, or I'm sorry, three-fourths minus one-fourth. If you can't do it, okay, you have this little thing over here. So three over four minus one over, ah, I didn't do the thing. There it goes. 1 over 4. You give my answer as a fraction. So it's going to be 1 half. M is equal to 1 half. 
find the uh, graph the equation of this one right here. So now, a uh, couple things. So we're gonna identify, so I'm gonna do the basic. So this is my slope. And this thing right here is my y-intercept. So intercept means that it's going to cross. It's going to like be there. That's where it's touching my point. So my y-axis, so if I, if I label everything, this is my x-axis. <clears throat> this is my y-axis. So I'm going to go through and do this. So it's going to intercept the y-axis at three. So I'm going to count down three. One, two, three. So I'm going to put a big dot right there. Slope is two. Slope is always rise over run. And in this case, it always has to be a fraction. You always have to have fractions for this one right here. So for this, even though it's gonna be two, there's gonna be implications. So it's gonna be two over one. So if I take two and divide it by one, I still get two, but it, it's implied that it is over one. So it means that when I'm reading this, it's going to go up to, and it's run. We always run to the right. We read from left to right. We're always going to run to the right. And the rise could be up or down. So if it's a negative number, it goes down. If it's a positive number, it goes up. So it goes up to 1, 2, over 1. Put a dot right there. And keep doing it if you need to. 1, 2, over 1. One, two, over one, there we go. And so let's see if I can actually get this right. But you guys are gonna be able to draw a whole lot better than I can, right? There we go, that's what you have to do. All right, so did I skip a bunch? No, nope, I'm at, there we go. All right, so 27, evaluate the formula. Uh, P equals A plus B plus C if A is 50. So let's see, P equals A, which is 50, plus B is 43, and plus 45. Hey, look, that's a very easy one. Can we do it? Yes, we can. All right, so let's you do the math. 50 plus 43 plus 45, 138. So P and my units on this one is going to be centimeters. All of them are in centimeters. So don't forget to label your units. Please, please, please don't forget that. Distance is, is rate times time. Our D equals RT. Find the rate that the distance travels. Uh, it, okay, so find the rate. So we're looking for R. So you have D equals R equals and T equals. So if I'm finding the rate, that means that my rate is going to be my unknown. So I'm going to leave that as my variable. Uh, if the distance is 140 and time traveled is 4 hours. So it's going to be 140 equals R times 4. So distance is 140, rate times time. There we go. So everything is in there. So now since rate and time is a multiplication, so to undo a multi multiplication, I need to divide both sides by 4. So those cancel. So R is equal to... Uh, when I do that right there, uh, 140 divided by 4, thirty-five. Now, since it is a rate, and the rate is always going to be like a miles per hour or something like that, since this one is in miles and this one is in hours, so it's going to be thirty five miles per hour.
solve the following inequalities. It's the same thing like what we just did with the solving the equation. Inequality, you treat it like it's an equal sign until you're done. So I'm going to try and get that t by itself by adding 18 to both sides. So 5t is less than, uh, that's going to give me 30. So 12 plus 18 is going to give me 30. Divide by 5. T is less than 6. Now, the only time that their inequality symbol is going to mess with you is when you are, uh, if you have, dividing a negative. If you're multiplying or dividing by a negative at this point right here, then you would have to flip the sign over for it to be true. So that's the only time that's going to ever mess with you. You might actually have to do that at some point. All right, so we should be on number 30 now. Um, this is another inequality, so I'm going to start by distributing. So distribute there, 3 times 7, 21. Okay, the next one is going to be 3 times x. So it's positive, so it's 3 x is greater than equal to 30. Uh, trying to get my x by itself, so let's start by moving the 21 to the other side. Since the 21 is positive, that means I have to subtract it to get rid of it. So 3x is greater than or equal to 9. Divide both sides by 3, and that's a positive 3, so it's not going to mess with my sign. x is still greater than or equal to 3. All right, for this next one right here, solve the following inequalities. Okay, this one right here, eh, same thing. So I'm gonna try and solve for everything on my left. So I'm gonna keep my y's on my left because I like reading it like that. And if you if you try to keep it constant, it's always gonna work. So I'm gonna start by adding eight. Four y is greater than two y. Now 14 plus eight is gonna give me positive 22. Then subtract my two y from both sides. So I should get, that's a subtraction sign, I'm sorry. My board is glitching a little bit. All right, so that's gonna give me two. Y is greater than 22. Divide both sides by two, a positive two. So again, not changing my thing. So Y is, sorry, greater than 11. Now, use the formula to find the total resistance. That's the R to T. If resistance one is nine ohms, second resistance is eight ohms. So it's gonna be R of R T is equal to nine times eight over nine plus eight. Handy dandy calculator, I love it. Go to my fraction. So on top, it's gonna to be nine times eight over nine plus eight. It's 72 over 17, and it's then round to the nearest tenth. So I need to show you guys how to get a decimal out of this now. So math, again, back to my number. And so right here, uh, right here on this, it says F to D. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Yeah, there it is. All right, so right here, my F to D, that means my fraction to decimal or the decimal to fraction. So you would use that to convert either or. So go ahead, hit that with my answer, because it says answer, so I'm changing the answer. So it's gonna be, uh, said round to the 10th. So the 10th is the two. So the three is not big enough to change the two. So I'm gonna do a 4.2 as my answer. And those are all going to be resistance in ohms. Thirty-three. If a compact car used sixty-two point five liters of unleaded gasoline to travel four hundred miles, how many liters of gas would a driver use to travel three hundred fifty miles? Okay. So, 
let's see. So I need to set up this, figure out how many, how many miles uh, I get out of each. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna do my, use per mile, uh, how much gas, okay. Ugh. Restroom break real quick. Okay, here we go again. All right, so oh, now I'm back. So we're trying to figure out uh, how much gasoline, how much gasoline it would take to travel 350 miles. So I'm gonna divide this out to try and figure out how many, how many liters does it take to go each mile? So I'm gonna do 62.5 liters over 400 miles. And I'm gonna do the math right there. So I'm gonna come up with a weird decimal on this one. So 62.5 divided by 400. So that it's 1565. So this is gonna be a 0.15625, and that's gonna be liters per mile. Okay, so every mile I use that many, that much liters, not even a whole liter. So it, it's, it's really not that much. Okay, for every mile, that's what it's gonna take. And so now I know for every mile, it does that. So I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna do 0.15625 and I'm gonna multiply that by my 350, which is gonna be this piece right here, 350 miles. Because I got liters per mile, so now I could actually multiply it by the miles to actually get that one right there. So times 350, so it's gonna take me 54, what are we rounding to, to the 10th? So the 10th is the six, you can see that. 10th is the six, so the eight is gonna make that six go up. So it's gonna be 54.7 liters. So 54.7 liters on that. All right, uh, 34, find the equation of a line passing through the given pairs of points, solve the equation for y. Okay, so slope, so slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for this one right here, this is gonna be my slope. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually plug it in here in a minute. So uh, this is my first point, so that's one, and this one's two, so x, y, x, y. So y2 is gonna be zero minus zero over six minus negative four. So it's the y from the second point minus the y from the first over the x from the second minus x to the first. So negative negative is gonna make it a positive zero over 10, which is just zero. So my slope is zero. That's all right. So now it's going to be, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how this y equals m x plus b. So my slope is the m. And my b is the y-intercept. So for this right here, my slope is gonna be zero. So my m is gonna be zero. And now I have to just plug in a number to actually figure this out. So I'm gonna do this in a different color so you can see this. I like changing up colors. Okay, so pick either one of those. Either one will be fine, either one. So I'm gonna pick one just because I feel like it. So the Y value is zero, so that's gonna be this. Zero equals M. My M right here, the slope, which I got right here is zero. Zero times my X value. My x value is this one right here, which is my negative four plus b. Okay, 
Okay, so let's do the math on this now because we're trying to solve for b. So 0 equals 0 times negative 4 is 0 plus b. So that's just going to be b. 0 equals b. So for this problem right here, we're going to have my y-intercept is going to be 0. Okay, so now let's look at my equation. Man, my board is messing up. So my equation, so I'm going to plug everything in now. So y equals m, which is going to be 0, x plus b. So do this right here, 0 times x is just going to be 0. So my equation is y equals 0. So if I were to try and put those two points on a graph and then draw a line in between them, you would actually see it's going to be on the x-axis. So my equation of this line is actually y equals 0 when I'm all said and done. That's a sucky problem for review, but guess what? You deal with it. Here's a better one. Okay, same formulas. Everything that we just did, we're going to do the same thing again. So let's find the slope. This is 1, this is 2. 1 minus 6 over 7 minus 4 is negative 5 over 7 minus 4 is going to give me 3. Ooh, that's a good one. So there's my new slope. Okay, and now let's do the y equals at maximum b. So I'm going to choose point 1 again. So my y value is 6, so I'm going to put a 6 here, equals m, my m value is the negative 5 over 3, times the x value, which is 4, plus b. Ooh, I'm trying to get b now. So I know that my m over here is negative 5 over 3, I need to find the b. All right, let's uh, negative 5 over 3 times 4. So turn it back on. Math. So negative 5 over 3 times 4. Okay, negative 20 over 3. Ooh. So 6 equals negative 20 over 3 plus b. Now, if it's negative on this side, to move it to the other side, I need to add 20 over 3. Okay, and since I don't feel like doing the math, okay, so it's going to be 6 plus my 20 over 3. And I got 38 over 3 equals my B value. Okay. Okay, now let's plug it into the formula. So right here, so it says solve the equation for Y. So, you know, we kind of did that right there. So now it's going to be Y equals my slope negative 5 over 3 x now it's a positive 38 over 3 so I'm going to plus 38 over 3 and that is going to be my answer for that one right there so better problem eh. you know fractions are your friends not food find the equation of a line pass it to the pairs of points again so it's going to be 10, so here's 1 and here's 2, minus negative 4 over 5 minus negative 2, negative negative makes it plus, so there we go, 14 over 7, which is 2. My m equals 2, okay? So again, my equation, y equals mx plus b. So Again, solving it for y. Exact same thing. So now, all right, so I'm going to use, you know what, for this one, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to use point 2, just because I feel like it. So I'm going to use the second point on this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to be 10 equals, 
uh, where am I at? 10 equals m, which is 2, times my 5, and plus b. So I'm trying to get b for this one right here. Okay, so let's see. b equals, so 10 equals, 2 times 5 is 10, plus b, subtract 10. So 0 equals b. Okay. Now let's do my equation. So now it's going to be y equals m, which is 2, x plus 0. You don't have to have the 0 there, but you know what? Why not? So I'm going to cut it off right now because my video is getting a little bit too long to upload. And I'm going to make a part 2 to this.